Our April plan with me flower is Edelweiss. Join me as we create a Dutch door cover, a new calendar page, and lots more. Hello friends, welcome back. My name is Shady Campbell and on this channel we get creative together. This is the April plan with me and if you haven't heard, my theme for my bullet journal this year is flowers of the world. So every month I'm kind of taking on a different flower and trying to illustrate and have fun with some of some of the more different, more exotic flowers that I don't normally go to. I'm always drawing poppies and whatnot. So uh, for January, we did Protea. February was Lotus, then Tulips. That's not very exotic, but it was the most requested. <laughs> and this month is Edelweiss. I'm gonna do a black and white theme with just a hint of that friendly warm gray that I love so much. And I'm kind of focusing on circles. I'm doing a lot of small illustrations in circular form. You'll see what I mean. We'll get into it right now. So here is my 2022 bullet journal, flowers of the world theme. I do a lot of resolutions and goals and year at a glance type stuff in the yearly setup video. So definitely check that out if you need some help and inspiration for setting up your journal. We talked about our tulips theme for March and I did a lot of colorful pattern work um, this month and I had a lot of fun with that. The weekly layout was different for me and I think I'm gonna stick with it going into April. We're right in the middle of the month filming this. I haven't even completed my illustration for this week. But let's flip over and we're going to begin our Edelweiss themed cover page for April. What I'm going to do here is trace a circle and just make sure it sits over that line a little bit. And then here's how I like to add text to my journal. This is kind of the lazy girl's hack. You're going to print out the word that you want to add, in this case, April. And then once you've printed it, flip it over, add some graphite from your pencil to the back of that little piece of paper. Then all we need to do is tape it in our journal and trace over it in pencil to give us a simple guide. Okay, friends, some big news now. I've designed a feminist floral tote bag. It's available for sale today, and there are limited quantities available. To head over to my shop, click the link in the video description or use the merch shelf below this video. Now that that's transferred, we kind of have the bare bones of our illustration here. And my April is sitting right on the line that I intend to cut for the Dutch door. So I'm just gonna move that out one square, no big deal. Then we'll begin our illustration, which will sit inside the circle. So the first thing I do is create a guide. I'm just placing large circles everywhere I wanna put a flower, a little Edelweiss blossom. And then here's how we draw them. We start with a cluster of tiny little circles at center, and then we draw little petals surrounding them like the spokes on a wheel. Once that's done, we go around and we add another circle of larger petals. And these ones can be a little weird, a little uneven. Let's do this together again. We start with a cluster of little dots on center. Then we're gonna place like tiny petals surrounding those dots. And then from there we go out and we fill that circle guide with these larger, slightly uneven petals. And that's it, that's the little Edelweiss blossom. The only thing is that these flowers are so tiny and so we wanna make sure they look tiny and delicate. So we're placing lots of leaves around them and doing these thin curving stems and we just want the illustration to kind of keep that delicate feel. Um, but by starting with a guide with those circles in place first, it really sets you up for success because you're not just trying to draw flowers. You know where you're gonna place them and then it becomes easy to add stems and leaves and I'm even gonna place a few tiny little four petal blossoms in there to give the illustration that nice delicate feel. Okay, let's grab a fine liner and start to complete our contour drawing. I'm using the relatively large uh, 0.5 millimeter nib, and these are the Mulatto Black Liners. Just a reminder that all the supplies are linked in the video description. And I'm carefully going around my lettering. This is all about that perfectly imperfect. Don't stress about this. You've already got a nice pencil outline there, like in computerized lettering. If it looks a little bit wonky or crooked, I actually think that adds a lot of charm to it because it's already so perfect um, because we traced basically and then I am adding dark lines here and this is just a lot nicer than coloring it in if you want that punchy dark lettering try doing line shapes 
shading instead of just filling it in completely, it looks so much more lively. I'll use the same fine liner for the flowers. I'm going to start with that cluster of dots on center or circles. Then we do the little petals going all around like the spokes of a wheel. And then we do another set of petals. And this should be quite straightforward because you've already drawn everything in. And now we just need to complete our fine liner contour drawing. As I said before, I've added some tiny little blossoms just to add to the delicate feel of the Edelweiss illustration. And uh, yeah, there's not much else to it. Let's quickly complete this contour drawing and get this cover page all done. I wanted to say thanks for being so supportive of my art and my designs. I know you've been waiting a long time for more merch. I wanted to do a great job. This tote is screen printed on heavy cotton canvas. It's the perfect size. And of course, it's designed by me. And I can't wait for you to get your hands on one. Use the link in the video description to shop. With the flowers done, I'm going to carefully go over that circle. I know this can be a little scary, but just try to keep your hand steady. And if you have a lot of flowers overlapping the circle, you actually only have to do tiny little sections at once, which makes it a lot more achievable to get that smooth line. Then we'll begin our line shading. And for that, I want a smaller fine liner, something like the 0.2 millimeter nib will give a nice precise line. And I just place a few little lines near the center of each flower on the inner bits of the petals to make it look like the flowers are a little concave. You wanna give them that, that depth, make them a little shadowy, a little darker towards center. And all you have to do is place some tiny little lines on the larger petals. And it, it also gives them the look of texture and it really brings your illustration to life and makes it pop. One other thing I like to do with line shading is to shade the leaves. And by really going dark on those leaves, it's going to differentiate between what is leaf and what is flower. So if I was coloring, this illustration might be white and green, but since it's in black and white, I want it to read as really black and white. So I'm shading all those leaves with uh, thin lines, just like the April title. I don't want to color them in completely. The illustration is so much more pleasing and interesting to look at when those leaves are shaded with lots and lots of thin, delicate delicate lines. With my line shading complete, the illustration has that beautiful graphic black and white feel, a lot of nice contrast there. I'm going to leave it alone. I think I will add some warm gray, but I'm going to come back to it. I don't always do that, but sometimes I just need to take a minute and think about it. We'll flip over. We'll add our little calendar on this side, which when we cut the Dutch door will be visible as part of the cover page. And then I want to create a fun illustration for this page, which I always place my goals and affirmations on, and I call it goals and focus. So we're going to trace some more circles and I'm just using my washi tape, placing one circle on each side of the page. And then I create another guide. I draw maybe two or three circles or ovals and those show me where I'll place the little florals, the flowers. <laughs> and then once the flowers are in place, all you have to do is add some tiny little leaves and berries kind of peeking out and you've got a really beautiful but simple illustration. Of course, we'll go over this in pen, grab a fine liner, and we're going to draw the Edelweiss. We'll do our contour drawing, go over all of the leaves and everything. And then when it comes to that circle, we want to fill that in a really nice black and create that high contrast, beautiful graphic illustration. I used a fine liner, but it took way too long. And you can also wear out the nib of the pen. So probably use a brush pen if you have one on hand. Something like a Tombow is perfect for this. Just me popping in to remind you that you can support this channel and make these videos possible by becoming a channel patron. You get access to an extra video every month and bonus weekly content like the cover page printable for your planner, worksheets, coloring pages, and all kinds of other stuff. Patreon support starts at two bucks a month, so check it out. Use the link in the video description. And then I'm going to add some really tiny, delicate black leaves to make it appear as though the circle kind of continues on beyond its bounds. And then this really comes to life when we grab our white gel pen and we start to fill in some of those uh, little branches and stems that might have gotten lost when we added the black brush pen. And we can also add some little white leaves as well. 
With that looking pretty, we're going to do the same thing for the upper illustration. I'm using a fine liner to create my contour drawing. I think I used the 07 for this. We went around the circle, shaded some of those leaves, and then filled in the entire circle with black to create a graphic, high contrast illustration. To complete my page, I simply add the goals and focus titles. The focus is my affirmation section. And then we are all done. Get rid of all our pencil and eraser marks and she's looking quite cute. Let's flip over and create our April calendar page. For this month, I wanted to create a two page calendar spread. I outline it in pencil, then I take a larger nib fine liner and go over it. I don't use rulers typically, I just like to pull the pen towards my body and that helps me to keep uh, the lines fairly straight. With the calendar in place, we'll take a warm gray marker. This is my favorite in Castell, uh, number two warm gray. And we're just gonna fill in across the top. I'm also going to write April just in a really simple, basic block print. And once that's in place, I like to make it pop by taking a smaller fine liner and adding a little bit of a shadow. This is also a great way to fix up lettering that might have gone a little wonky on you. You can cover up uneven bits with your uh, fine liner shadow on the right hand side. We'll place those days of the week across the top. And then to create a little section for my notes and to do lists, I drew a rectangle in pencil to create a guide. And then I take that warm gray or any marker and you just fill in every other line line on your dot grid. It's a really simple, effective way to um, make a, a nice notes section or whatever. And I need a lot of room for notes and dates on my April calendar because we are moving. Chris and I just bought our first home. We are so excited. We're over the moon. It feels surreal. It's a really tough market to get into right now in Canada. And we're actually moving to Ontario to be a little bit closer to family. So Sully will have grandparents in his daily life and yeah I'm a big thrifter and just read that as like junk hunter <laughs> so I can't wait to start doing furniture makeovers and paint the whole house and DIY everything um, yeah just digging and hunting through a pile of refuse in a thrift store being like is this three-legged table is that anything that is my happy place so owning our own home i'm hoping i'll get to do even more of that than i do right now and i cannot wait to share some of that with you if you're not following me on instagram definitely follow over there for more personal stuff like home and diy and all the the goods i love the way this calendar page has come together we've got another circular graphic black and white illustration of edelweiss and all we need to do now is move on to our weekly layout I'm doing the same layout as last month. I've just switched it up slightly um, to put four days of the week on the left instead of on the right hand page. We create these long rectangles, leaving lots of space for to-do lists and notes for each day of the week. So if you like a weekly layout that really gives you lots of space for to-do lists on the weekend, which mine don't always, then this is a great layout for you. I have outlined it in pencil. I'm carefully going over it in pen, just pulling that pen towards my body to help me keep it steady. We'll put a note section up here on the right hand side, calendar on the left, and we really haven't left a lot of space for illustrations, which is nice. With a busy month ahead, I don't wanna commit to doing like lots of illustrations in my planner every week. Just a no fuss, no muss weekly spread for me. A nice way to add a title to your notes area is to use your marker and just write it in. Nice, thick, weighty line, gives you almost like a bubble lettering. And then again, take the fine liner and simply add a little bit of a shadow. Shadows can hide all your mistakes <laughs> and make the font look even more even than it already is. Sticking with my simple illustration here, we're going to just draw some leaves and fill them in with line shading. Couldn't be any easier. And then I want to make like a little tag. If you have gift tags, this is a great way to add your month title. Just throw one in there. If you don't have a gift tag, cut one out. Just make one out of craft paper or any scrap paper, an old envelope that you happen to have on hand. To make a, a handmade tag that looks super realistic, all you really need is a little square of washi tape and a hole punch. And then I'm using a white gel pen to uh, add the date, add the week there, and a few more leaves. Why not? We can never have enough leaves. 
With my calendar and my weekly layout and everything all done, I flipped back to my cover page and I decided I did want to add a little bit of that warm gray, kind of continuing my black and white and gray theme all throughout then. And I just filled everything in. It really makes the white of the flowers of the Edelweiss pop. And uh, that's it. I cut it out, of course, completed the Dutch door. And this is my setup for April all done. I have my Edelweiss cover page, goals and affirmations section. Um, I've got a nice two page calendar spread with lots of room for notes. And then I stuck to the same weekly layout as last time. Patrons, just a friendly reminder that you can print my cover page. That's available for you as this week's bonus content. To support this channel, head over to my Patreon site and check it out. And if you'd like to grab a feminist tote bag designed by me, make sure to shop those this week as there are limited quantities available. Thank you.